Hi everyone, welcome back to BioBulletin. Today we're going to be discussing the ethics of euthanasia alongside with an insight into its legality, what it is, as well as arguments in support and against a mercy killing. This one's going to be very interesting and highly topical, so make sure you give it a listen all the way through. So Ashish, what exactly is euthanasia? Are there like different types or anything? Um, yes, Kanishka. So euthanasia is the act of deliberately ending a person's life to relieve suffering. For example, it could be considered euthanasia if a doctor deliberately gave a patient with a terminal illness a drug that they do not otherwise need, such as an overdose of sedatives or muscle relaxant, with the sole aim of ending their life. So as you mentioned about the types, there are two main types of euthanasia. Euthanasia can be classified as voluntary or non-voluntary. Voluntary euthanasia is where a person makes a conscious decision to die and asks for help to do so. Non-voluntary euthanasia is where a person is unable to give their consent for example, because they're in a coma, and another person takes the de decision on their behalf. And this is perhaps because the old person previously expressed a wish for their life to be ended in such circumstances. So we all know that euthanasia is legal under English law, but the number of countries where it is permitted is growing. So Switzerland is probably the first country that comes to mind when thinking about assisted dying. It allows physician-assisted suicide without a minimum age requirement, diagnosis or symptom state. But assisted suicide is deemed illegal if the motivations are selfish. So, for example, if someone assisting death stands to inherit earlier or if they don't want the burden of caring for a sick person. Uh, in 2018, 221 people travelled to the Swiss clinic for assisted suicide. Uh, 87 from Germany, 31 from France and 24 from the UK. Um, the stats account for about 1.5% of the Swiss deaths are the result of assisted suicide. So euthanasia is also legal in the Netherlands in cases where someone is experiencing unbearable suffering and there's no chance of improving it. Um, there's no requirement to be terminally ill and no mandatory waiting period. But did you know that children as young as 12 can request assisted dying, but parental consent is obviously needed for those under 16. But I thought that was quite scary and quite concerning that countries would allow children of such young age to make such vital decisions in their lives. In Belgium follows and they say uh, euthanasia is, is um, legal for those with unbearable suffering and no prospect of improvement again. Uh, if patients are not terminally ill, there is a one month waiting period before euthanasia can be performed. Then you have uh, other countries like Luxembourg, Canada, Colombia, Australia, in the US, there's several states that now offer illegal assisted dying. So you've got Oregon, uh, Vermont, California, New Jersey. They all have laws or court rulings allowing doctor assisted suicide for terminally ill patients. So by these stats, we can see that it's quite a debated topic and it's seen as widely legal. I'm wondering, surely it's the patient's choice what they choose to do with their life, right? Yeah, so Vivian, as you said, a lot of people do argue in support of legalization of euthanasia on the basis of autonomy and saying that patients should have the right to do whatever they want with their life uh, and autonomy is a medical ethics pillar the other three medical ethics pillar being beneficence non-malevolence and justice yeah exactly um so with autonomy being defined as the right to self-governance and kind of the self-determination of your own path being something you you're allowed to do like choose uh, many say that legally saying a person is not allowed to die voluntarily is not really acting in accordance with that pillar of autonomy and thus surely it's unethical um obviously obviously this is only truly applicable to voluntary euthanasia because anything else would be in violation of the patient's autonomy uh, and thus would have to be different like regulated differently basically um, suicide, standard suicide, was obviously legalised in, I think it was 1961, on the same kind of basis that um, we should have the right to choose what we do with our own life. And I feel like uh, in, the in the situation of euthanasia, where a person is obviously undergoing uh, extreme amounts of pain, which is kind of life-changing, and they want to die because of that, um, many people say that they should thus be given the right to do that. If we look to uh, an ethical situation for another reason, a lot of people uh, argue in support of euthanasia. Um, it's kind of an ethically debated scenario, but if we assume a child comes in to uh, any, for example, with extreme need of a ventilator or any other specialist kit, 
and all the ventilators are taken um and there's a 90 year old man who's almost guaranteed to die um and he voluntarily says take me off the ventilator to save the life of the child because he's going to die anyway uh from a legal perspective they the doctors at that at that time would not be able to actually change um the ventilator from the man to the child because it would be acting against nhs principles such as uh offering uh equal care to everyone no matter of uh, age race or sexuality or any other bias um but i was just thinking what what are you guys' opinion on that kind of scenario i mean i i have quite a strong opinion and that's like the right to life uh is a right to life with minimum quality and value and death is the opposite of life but the process of dying is part of life so what i'm trying to get at is that people have the right to try and make the events in their lives as good as possible so they have also got the right to make their dying as good as possible if the dying process is unpleasant people should have the right to shorten it and and reduce the unpleasantness i mean obviously people have obligations to their friends families doctors nurses or in society in general and these obligations limit their right but it should not outweigh a person's essential right to refuse medical treatment that they do not want yeah exactly so vivin what what would you say your opinion is i was going to say i feel like it's a more general approach you see you have the young child and you have the elderly man and you said that in this situation um the elderly man is guaranteed to die so using the ventilator in that situation for him seems almost unnecessary if it's go- if he's going to die um eventually so i feel like giving the child an opportunity where it could su- where he or she could survive um i think that's when you have to pass the ventilator onto the young child i understand the um legal reasons behind it and she i think it's kind of your uh, opinion your approach but i feel like the elderly man offering that yes give to the young child i think that should happen yeah i think um from from my opinion i'd say in this kind of scenario it does seem appropriate but i also see the reasons why um they wouldn't be able to uh, and i think it's so the nhs is is built on the principle of equality and care being offered to everyone and i think if we uh if we do uh, offer the if we do take the ventilator from the elderly gentleman we're kind of going against the ethical pillar which she mentioned of justice um because it's not really just to take f- uh, to take from one equally valuable human life and give to another uh, purely on the ground of age but equally many atheists and other people argue that um that young child may go on to live potentially 80 further years say whereas the uh, elderly gentleman isn't going to do that and in that child's lifetime he may change his world or do something else which is more valuable to like to to everyone and that's kind of more of like uh, a utilitarian perspective and stuff like that um yeah so that kind of links to another argument in support of legalization of euthanasia which is a rather cynical view which i personally don't align with but it's the idea that um keeping people alive who are very likely to die uh kind of takes doctors away from uh people who may be in in more need of care or who have better chances of surviving with the care uh and thus that energy and money could be spent uh helping people who re- require life saving treatment um which i personally believe is a slightly weaker argument but it is used another further slightly weaker argument is also the idea that we allow animals to be put to death um if they're in extreme pain or um like suffering so why wouldn't we allow that with humans mm-hmm. Um, I don't know if anyone else has any other supportive arguments. I mean, yeah, uh, just building on my point, uh, even if there is a right to die, I think that it doesn't mean that the doctors have a duty to kill. So I, I feel like no doctor can be forced to help the patient who wants euthanasia. So putting the pressure on the doctors would be, I think, the incorrect uh, way forward. I think we'd have to really focus on it being the patient's initiative um uh much more than the doctors and it would have to be a, like 
a patient forced decision because uh, especially with non-voluntary euthanasia i think that's uh, quite it's quite a tough one because you don't know what the person wants especially if they're in a coma so you can't say that we want to switch off the ventilator because of what someone uh, what a friend thinks for example so that's why i want um that's why i think personally that you can't have a doctor making that decision but that's my personal opinion but like Kanishka said, there's also many arguments against euthanasia. So uh, palliative care is physical, emotional and spiritual care for a dying person when cure is not possible. And it includes compassion and support for the family and friends of the patient. So competent pal uh, palliative care is, may well be enough to prevent a person feeling any need to contemplate uh, euthanasia. And uh, I think the key to this is to treat the patient, patient as a person and not as a set of symptoms or medical problems that sometimes the doctors can do because they see these patients day in, day out. And I think that this is the way forward because this is the key to help the, vic the patient themselves as well as uh, the family and friends to really cope with this um, end for a lot of these patients. And that's why um, I would agree with the statement and say uh, pa palliative care is probably the way forward for uh, rather than euthanasia. Yeah, um, there are there are a few other arguments as well. So, um, while e euthanasia may be illegal and violate the um, pillar of autonomy, its legalization will also contradict the pillars of non malevolence. Uh, and so that's to do with not causing harm to a patient, obviously. And euthanasia and mercy killing would, of course, actively require cause uh, causing harm on purpose to a patient to end their life. So you're kind of caught between. A couple of different ethical pillars here because um while legalizing it might contradict one keeping it illegal is contradicting autonomy um like i mentioned with the example you're also contradicting the pillar of justice uh by ask, uh, by arguing like whose life would be worth more uh it's not just it's not just to value one life over another purely because of age and that would be seen as kind of ageist um which would as i mentioned con uh, contradict nhs principles um, it would also, like Ashish touched on, um, make it seem as if the lives of the terminally, terminally ill don't really matter. And that would have devastating consequences in the sense that it would discourage the work towards cures and research for them. Uh, and it can kind of heighten the fear um, that people feel and being thought of as a burden if they were to be terminally ill. Um, so that can lead to kind of yeah, like involuntary euthanasias in the sense that people may um, choose to die purely because they feel pressure from um, family and friends as if they were a burden. Um, and that's never a good thing because then you have that case of are people asking to die purely because they really want to, because they want to end their suffering? Or is it because they don't want to inf like feel like a burden or inflict any suffering on their family uh so feel it would be better for them to die uh in which case it can be very mixed scenario and equally it would put far too much power in the hands of doctors and kind of damage the trust between the patient and doctor and undermine the commitment of doctors and nurses to saving the lives of the terminally ill um i don't know if anyone else has any further to add yes i want to talk about the slippery slope argument so the slippery slope argument is based on the idea that once a healthcare service, and by extension the government, starts essentially killing its own citizens, a dangerous precedent has been set. So the concern is that a society that allows voluntary euthanasia will then gradually change its attitudes to include non-voluntary and then involuntary euthanasia. So legalized voluntary euthanasia could eventually lead to a wide range of unforeseen consequences. So very ill people who need constant care or people with severe disabilities may feel pressured to request euthanasia so they're not a burden to their family. And doctors may occasionally be badly mistaken about a patient's diagnosis and outlook and the patient may, chose, may choose uh, euthanasia as they have been wrongly told they have a terminal condition. I think we should balance the moral principles with the religious principles as well. And there are several uh, Hindu points on of view of um, on euthanasia. 
sorry, uh, most Hindus would say that a doctor should not accept a patient's request for euthanasia since this will cause the soul and the body to be separated at a natural time. And the result will damage the karma of both doctor and patient. And other Hindus also believe that euthanasia cannot be allowed because it breaches the basic teaching of Ahimsa, which is doing no harm. But then again, we can also argue the other viewpoint and say that by helping to end a painful life, a, a person is performing a good deed and so fulfilling their dharma, which is moral obligation. So I think it comes back to the morals from Hinduism. Uh, wh what about Christianity, Kanishka, and uh, utilitarian uh, Vivian? Yeah, so from a, from a Christian perspective, Christians are generally against euthanasia. So the arguments are usually based on the belief that God, is, uh, God has given us life and human beings are made in God's image. And so to kind of throw away that life or give it up would be sinful. Uh, some churches also emphasize like the importance of not interfering with the natural process of death. But I'll get to that like, slightly later. Um, Christianity obviously has this idea of heaven, which is eternal life in paradise. And throwing away the, li the life that God has given you and the privilege of um, that being alive immediately sends you to hell in scripture, which is the like diametric of heaven. Um, the key principle of sanctity of life in which life is sacred and sent by God. And so through willingly giving away something given by God, that's, that's just fundamentally wrong in Christianity. And so it just shouldn't occur. Um, if we again look to the Ten Command Commandments, sorry, uh, thou shalt not murder is obviously one of the biggest ones. Uh, and thus to legalize euthanasia and mercy killing is almost seen as a way to legalize like a form of murder, even though it is merciful and for the sake of the patients. Um, that would again be against religious scripture and thus against God. Uh, more fundamentalist Christians, as I mentioned, believe that it's better not to interfere with the, de uh, the process of death. Um, like so they believe the time before death is profoundly spiritual and thus to interrupt god's work is wrong um but like i said that's more of a fundamentalist belief um christians also believe that intrinsic dignity and the value of hu of human life mean means that the value of each life is identical and that kind of links to the sanctity of life um and they don't think that human dignity and value are measured by mobility, intelligence, or any like life achievements, meaning that valuing human beings is equal. Um, you can't say that we should um, take the life of one individual for the sake of another in terms of like the, the ethical scenario I posed earlier. Um, and again, that's linked to more people in vegetative states where their equipment or resources could go to save the lives of others. Um, and the Bible in Corinthians speaks of your body as being a temple and a home for the Holy Spirit. Thus, to choose to die, you're choosing to kill the Holy Spirit too. So it's fundamentally thought of as wrong. But there are some some arguments in support of it, saying if um, if we want to value everyone equally, surely we should respect their opinion and stuff like that. But what about utilitarian within? So from a utilitarian viewpoint, justifying euthanasia is a question of showing that allowing people to have a good death at a time of their own choosing will make them happier than the pain from their illness, loss of dignity and the distress of anticipating a slow, painful death. Someone who wants euthanasia will have already made that comparison for themselves. But utilitarianism deals with the total human happiness, not just that of the patient. So even euthanasia opponents who agree with utilitarianism in principle can claim that the negative effects on those around the patient, so the family, the friends, the medical staff, would outweigh the benefit of the patient. So utilitarian are pretty much okay with euthanasia. They agree with the um, standpoint of it, at least. Yeah, I mean, this was quite an ethical heavy podcast. I'm sure you guys would agree, but I think the main things to take from this is that at most religious perspectives draw back to the moral pers uh, perspectives of the argument. And so our initial points about it be the right of life and the right of death would probably be the best way forward. But then again, uh, the palliative care argument is also there, where if you have competent care for people with terminal illness, there would be a need for them to have euthanasia. But I mean, it's, it's one of those where it would be split and it would be the government's decision solely and I don't think religious standpoints would affect too strongly into that. Uh, yeah, I, I guess I agree with that. Um, 
it's probably worth mentioning we didn't obviously cover every single point uh, and we didn't go too in depth because it is as I just mentioned highly ethical but I think that was a good summary of today's podcast so if you enjoyed make sure you leave a like um, subscribe for more uh, podcasts very similar to this um, and more medically heavy based podcasts uh, if you have any topics for discussion leave them in the google forms below and yeah see you next week